Jack and Jill went up the hill after work to fetch a drink at their local watering hole. A drink? Just one? <clears throat> Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a few drinks at their local watering hole. Now wait a second. Just how many are they going to have? I mean, are they going to be able to drive back down the hill? Will they be okay to go to work in the morning? Shouldn't they think this thing through before they get there? You know, falling down, broken crown? So where do you think we should start? Before they decide to go out, of course. For safety and health reasons, it's important for Jack and Jill to plan their drinking ahead of time. Any amount of alcohol in the system is risky, but they should at least estimate what their blood alcohol content or BAC will be when it's time to come back down the hill. Using a BAC chart, they'll just need to know the number of major drinks they plan to drink, their fit weight, and how long they plan to stay out. Let's say Jack and Jill plan to arrive at 6 p.m. and leave at 9. So, Jack weighs about 200 pounds and usually drinks three beers. However, his doctor says he should really weigh 180 pounds, his fit weight. Giving Jack a 0.06% BAC. Now, Jack can subtract 0.015% for each hour after the first hour of drinking from when he started drinking to when he plans to leave the bar for a final BAC of 0.03% at 9 p.m. Now, Jill plans to have a margarita which actually counts as 1.5 major drinks. So she would be having two major drinks. Her fit weight is 140 pounds, making her BAC 0.07%. Now subtract 0.015% for each hour after the first hour of drinking for a final BAC of 0.04% when it's time to leave. Now, of course, Jack and Jill know that their BAC level can be influenced by a number of things, medication, age, health. So while calculating their BAC is useful, it's just an estimate. By planning ahead, Jack and Jill are able to make informed decisions about how their night will go and avoid falling down and breaking their crown and arrive home happily ever after.